Obamacare and healthcare in general. Yeah. And it's running a big business, you know all the ins and outs about providing that for workers. Small businesses, a big deal. It's a huge deal. Well, we have to repeal Obamacare. We have to because it's too complicated for anybody to understand. Obamacare, the law itself, is longer than a Harry Potter novel and a lot more boring, so of course nobody read it. But then it's accompanied by tens of thousands of pages of additional regulation. No one understands this. So what's happening? The health insurance industry is consolidating, the hospital system is consolidating, because only the big can survive big government. The one thing we've never tried is a truly competitive health insurance market. What we've had is 50 regulated state oligopolies. We've never had real competition. I'm a cancer survivor. Of course people with pre-existing conditions need to be covered. Of course people who truly can't afford it need to have access to quality, affordable health care. But let's try the one thing we've never tried, which is real competition. Immigration. Where do you stand on immigration? It's a big issue in your party. Yes, it is. Well, I think we have to start by securing the border. And we have to do that for three reasons. One, because if we don't, the problem just keeps getting worse. Two, do we really imagine that ISIS doesn't know we have a porous border? Of course our enemies know we have a porous border, and they're figuring out how to use that to their advantage. And third, when we don't do the basics, when the federal government doesn't do the most important thing it's supposed to do, protect the homeland, secure the border, then people lose faith in anything government does. And that loss of trust and faith is corrosive. So we gotta secure the border. And then, once we've done that, we have to fix the legal immigration system, which honestly has been broken for decades under both Republicans and Democrats. So when you look back at your time at HP, would you have done anything differently? Not really. That's not to say that I was perfect. I'm not. We all make mistakes. I made some mistakes in terms of people. Certainly the boardroom tussle at the end uh, was unpleasant to go through. We had board members who were leaking confidential information to the press. That's conduct on becoming a board member. And I wasn't prepared to stay in the job unless they were prepared to give up theirs and quit leaking information. Uh, I lost that political battle. Believe it or not, politics happens in a boardroom as well. But um, the big things I got right. What do you think the biggest threat is? Well, I think ISIS and Iran are huge threats. They're huge threats. But we face many challenges. Vladimir Putin, in his ambition, is a real challenge. He also represents an opportunity, an opportunity to strengthen the NATO alliance, an opportunity to rebuild our Eastern European defenses, which inexplicably President Obama unilaterally just pulls out and gives up on. So Iran and ISIS are huge threats, but they also represent a common enemy that can help us rally others to our cause. What's something that somebody wouldn't know about you, even if they've followed you for a long time? Hmm. Well, I like to make songs up for my grandkids. And don't ask me to sing them, because <laughs> I'm not going to. I, won't. I, won't. That's a deal. I play the piano for many, many years. I love music. If I had had another life, I would have liked to have been a musician. So I satisfy that urge by composing songs, which I sing to my dogs and my grandchildren. <laughs> Uh, it's been reported you received a $21 million severance package from HP. Um, so the question is twofold. One, there were criticisms that Mitt Romney never embraced his wealth, his success, mm -hmm. in a way that translated to the average American. And two, there is now a Democrat CEO employee pay fairness bill mm -hmm. that's up on the Hill. What do you make of those two things? Well, I think first, um, we should always strive in every setting for a pay for performance environment. So whether you're a secretary or a CEO or you head a federal government bureaucracy, we ought to pay for performance. We ought to focus on merit. By the way, it's interesting to note that for all the Democrats' discussion of equal pay for equal work, the single biggest impediment to that is the seniority system. Time and grade, all you got to do is wait it out. And of course, federal government bureaucracies and unions run on seniority systems. So my particular pay package from the day I arrived to the day I left 
was voted on by shareholders, as it should have been. It was based on the performance of the firm, as it should have been. A large part of it was in stock of the firm, as it should have been. And so shareholders had a good chance to look that over and decide whether they thought I was being paid for my performance. And as far as that bill and the fairness uh, push that they're making well, in Capitol Hill? Um, there have been laws in place in this country for over 50 years that guarantee equal pay for equal work. And so if a woman isn't being paid equally because of her gender, she should take full advantage of the laws that are there to protect her.